Hi guys, Overarch here, and today I'm going to be talking about some of my favorite mech builds in Mech Warrior Online. So, just a couple things first of all. This is just my opinion. Uh, this is obviously a very subjective thing. What mechs you find best are obviously going to depend upon your playstyle, level of skill, um, just the matches you get into as well. So, don't take this as some sort of absolute I'm saying these are the best mechs I haven't played every mech in the game because oh my god there's so many but this is uh, my idea of what some of the best mechs in the game that I've tried are and uh, how I build them and uh, hopefully you guys can get a little bit inspired in your own mech building so first of all I've divided this video into different um, roles for the mechs scout interceptor skirmisher brawler and fire support so let's just get started with the scouts uh, the first scout that I like to use is just your very typical Jenner it's very easy to use um, I just go with a laser build this one has uh, six small pulse lasers anything that's gonna be getting in close and capping the enemy you know, shooting them is uh, gonna be pretty strong in a scout so the role of scouts is just to you know well scout the enemy so they need to be fast they need to be relatively durable or you know survivable because speed is also a measure of survivability and uh, they should also have some armament to harass the enemy so I think this Jenner fits all of that good armor good heat management um, decent weaponry so for that reason I particularly like this Jenner build Next is the Cicada X5, and pretty much all of the Cicadas can function as a scout. Um, they are a little bit heavier than the light mechs, so you are going to be expected to contribute more in terms of damage uh, for your team in order to keep things you know, kind of even, because you are taking up more tonnage. Um, the X5 is a hero mech, so it is. I almost didn't include it because it's almost cheating. Uh, the big thing about the X5 is it actually has missile slots. So as you can see from this build here, it has SRM-8 as well as four medium lasers. And while the X5 does not have uh, ECM, which is its only downside, it does have almost 300 points of armor. So it does have a lot of armor. Even then, though, I do still have some issues with uh, very quickly getting you know bursted down by uh, enemy missiles. In terms of skills for this, I put uh, most of my skill points into mobility. As you can see, pretty much getting every speed tweak that I could in order just to go that little bit faster. And then I put some points into survivability as well as uh, things like missile rack and laser duration over here. And uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty much it. It's a very strong mech. It's What I do with this mech is I scout at first and then once my team has engaged the enemy, I'll go in and I'll joust in and just kind of run through, strafe the enemy, run through their team, distract them, kind of just be a thorn in their side. And I usually get pretty good damage with this mech. Now let's move on to interceptors. So interceptors are designed to counter enemy light and to counter enemy scouts. So whether that be a cicada or whether that be another Jenner. Now for this, I don't have a mech currently set up for this role. But what you do is you just take a any mech, any light mech, and mount streak SRMs and lasers onto it. And that's going to let you chase down a uh, enemy light mech very easily and do some real damage to them. So uh, any sort of commando or um, Jenner with missiles can really function well as an interceptor. In fact, that's what I found functions the best as interceptors. Next up we have skirmishers. And uh, for this category, I have three mechs. So skirmishers are the mechs that uh, kind of do damage. They're the mechs that pop out of cover, burst somebody down, and then pop back into cover. So uh, they need to have pretty high burst damage. They need to have a lot of armament, and they need to have heavy armor. So let's get started. First of all, my first choice is a little bit unconventional, and that's because it's a hybridized scout. It is a cicada. This is the uh, 3M cicada, and it mounts Guardian ECM, which makes it very difficult to detect, as well as a rotary auto cannon 2 with two tons of ammunition, and a medium laser and AMS. So this can not only support your allies with that AMS, support them with scouting and the ECM, but it's decent to detect. It's decently hard to detect, and it can. Uh, 
really put the hurt on somebody with that rack two. Rack twos are just racks in general, as you're going to see in this category, I think dominate the skirmisher category because they can just do so much damage over a relatively short period of time. And then as soon as you start to uh, jam, you can just pop back into cover, wait for the uh, cooldown to go off, and then boom, pop back out, start, start murdering again. So for that reason, I absolutely love uh, racks for skirmishers. This mech, I find it's best to get around to the side of the enemy uh, in order to, you know, kind of skirmish with them. I don't want to be out in front of them. In terms of perks, again, I got all the speed tweak perks. And then I went ahead and pretty much got all the, uh, as many as I could, as the enhanced uh, UAC rack slots. So... Uh, another thing that I almost always take on all my mechs is advanced zoom. You're going to be skirmishing around the outside of the battle. You will need advanced zoom in order to uh, make sure you're landing all your shots like you want to be. Now then, the next in our list is my personal favorite, a bushwhacker. So this is actually my favorite build in the entire game. And it is a bushwhacker with two rotary autocannon fives and two medium lasers. So let's take a look at the loadout. So bushwhackers are relatively slow, however they mount a crazy armament. And uh, with this mech, I think my worst game so far, a game I got absolutely like stomped in, I still had about 250 to 300 damage. Um, I routinely break 500 damage with this mech. I've gotten as high as 7 or 800. And um, just those two rotary autocannon fives are just, they will absolutely rip into anything. And um, you're survivable enough that I often run out of ammo. So I might actually have to play around a little bit with stripping out one of the medium lasers for even more ammo. And uh, yeah, you will get a absolutely insane amount of damage with this mech. Just by popping out, shoot, you know, blasting somebody, then popping back. And uh, for, that it's, for that reason, it's extraordinarily strong. I highly recommend this mech build. Um, I believe for this one, it is a, a Bushwhacker BSW X2 is the chassis. So next, going down to our last skirmisher, is the Thunderbolt. So the reason I chose the Thunderbolt is because it's uh, basically just a heavier version of the Bushwhacker I described before. For this one, I'm mounting two Rotary Autocannon 2s. I've been kind of experimenting with just replacing it with a Rack 5 or maybe even two rack fives we also mount ams and four medium lasers so it's basically just a heavier version of the uh bushwhacker and uh it does the exact same role and is pretty damn strong as well next going on to our last oh actually that was the last one wasn't it going on to our brawler category now so brawlers are mechs that want to get in they're the mechs that push forward. They have extremely heavy armor, they're extremely durable, and they mount a lot of close-range weaponry. They want to get close in your face and just mess you up. And uh, for this category, I have three mechs, Hunchback, Atlas, and King Crab. So the only one of these me uh, mechs I currently own is the Atlas. This is my Atlas build. As you can see, AC-20, LRM-20, SRM-12 and then uh, four medium lasers, and I find it does fairly well. Um, one thing you do kind of have to be careful about is getting LRM down. You definitely want to stick to uh, stick within some allies' AMS umbrellas. Uh, in terms of long-range weaponry, because this is a very slow mech, I took the LRM-20 just so I have something to hit at long range with. You could probably strip that out and go with um, you know a different option should you so choose. But I find this mech to be pretty damn good. As a rule of thumb, any Atlas is going to be able to fill the Brawler category. So you can put whatever you want on this thing, and uh, you'll be able to be a Brawler. Also, it has a very cool paint job. I love this. This was actually one of the, um, I believe it was an incentive mech I got just for being, uh, I believe it was a founder. Don't quote me on that. But they gave these mechs out a little, a little while ago. The others are the Hunchback. So you can use either version of the Hunchback. This one's the clan version. And um, basically just mounts uh, a lot of ballistic or energy weapons on it. Get in there and punch the enemy in the face. Uh, for my personal favorite build, uses an AC-20 and then a bunch of medium lasers. So 
Again, just kind of do pretty much anything with the Hunchback, and you're going to be a brawler. And then lastly, we have the King Crab, which I don't currently own. I have played before, though. And for that version, I prefer, you know, the uh, dual AC-20 King Crabs, just because those at close range, those AC-20s will just absolutely destroy whatever they hit. You basically just pick a part of the enemy mech, and boom, and it's gone. So super strong, super powerful. Um, yeah, I, I really have nothing to complain about in terms of uh, King Crabs. I believe they're a little bit less durable than Atlas's, though. Next, we have the fire support category. So these mechs like to stay back and kind of plink away at the enemy, either with LRMs or with direct fire. And so my first choice is a little bit unorthodox here. It's actually a Kit Fox. And uh, the reason I chose the Kit Fox is because it mounts ECM, it can mount a clan gauze rifle along with a lot of ammo and even you know a couple of little micro lasers for personal defense so what this mech likes to do is he likes to get up on the sides of the battlefield he likes to flank the enemy and then rein in gauze rifle fire and it is pretty strong in my opinion it will wreck it will deal good damage considering you're only like what a 30 ton mech you're a very small amount of tonnage mounting a very large amount of firepower and so for that reason i like it next is the trebuckets the trebuchet so the trebuchet is just your medium lrm fire support platform this one mounts a lrm 30 and two medium lasers as well as a crap ton of ammunition so uh you can just run up or well not run up but you know hang out along the outskirts of the battlefield and just pump them full of missiles without really having to commit that much of your team's tonnage to your mech so this is the medium fire support option the heavy support fire option or heavy fire support is the stalker so this stalker my personal build mounts two lrm 20s and an lrm 15 so it mounts an absolutely crazy amount of volley lrms it also mounts a lot of ammunition and all of this is artemis as well as tag am at two ams's and four medium lasers for personal defense so you have a mech that is capable of fighting off most uh, light mechs you have a mech that can also absolutely lay a ton of of hate a ton of lrms downrange while also tagging the enemy to enhance its own lrms even further and providing an ams umbrella for your team so yeah this is a really strong mech build and um, one of my personal favorites so like i said guys this is far from a definitive list um, let me know if you for one like the video because i will be doing if you guys like it I will be doing more videos of this nature where I talk about some of my other builds, maybe go a little bit more in-depth on certain builds, the builds that I find fun or zany, or uh, even going into maybe doing like a clan version, inner sphere version. As you can tell, I'm mostly an inner sphere pilot, so uh, exploring the clans a little bit more to find some good builds there I think would be pretty cool. Uh, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time. Bye.